So I'm happy to be here with Alex Cook at the Boston Trauma Research uh, Foundation conference, the Bessel van der Kolk's uh, conference. It's the 30, 35th one. And uh, we are going to meet Alex. Thank you, Alex, for coming here. Well, thank uh, you for having me. Um, let's discover who you are, what you're doing. I know you work mm -hmm. a lot with adolescents and children um, yes. for the traumatized uh, people. Uh, and that's um, a population that we have to take care of. Absolutely. And I'm really uh, curious about what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, well, the first time I was at this conference was actually about 30 years ago. Wow. And it was actually in this same location, which is ironic. Um, but so I worked, I started as a postdoc at the trauma center with Bessel van der Kolk and then um, ran the children's services program there for a number of years and then became the associate director until um, finally leaving in 2018, right before the Trauma Research Foundation was formed. And um, while I was there, um, I met colleagues Liz Warner and Ann Westcott and um, Heather Finn, and we also worked together with this woman, Jane Kumar, to develop a model um, for treating traumatized children. And um, one of the things that I loved about this model and the whole process of developing it is that we really did it from the ground up. Um, we put our heads together, we put a room together that um, was really focused on trying to help regulate um, children. And um, because we were seeing these very dysregulated, traumatized children in these very small offices and our poor trainees were just going, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to keep these kids safe in this room. And so we said, well, I wonder if we can get a bigger room and have some bigger kinds of equipment, more gross motor kinds of equipment. And so we worked with Jane Kumar, who was an occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then we set up a video camera and we watched tape. And from that, we developed um, a way of approaching uh, working with reg dysregulation and traumatized children. And... As time went on and we watched more tape, we found that their trauma material started coming out. As they got regulated, their trauma material came out. And then we started trying to figure out how to incorporate the caregiver. So now our model, which is called SMART, um, Sensory Motor Arousal Regulation Treatment. Okay. Um, and it's really about that. It's about using sensory and motor inputs to help arousal regulation and to help um, really use that lens of where is somebody in their arousal regulation and in their social connection um, to help guide um, the treatment and the treatment decisions um, and the treatment model in order to develop um, across trauma processing, due to trauma processing, attachment build, um, and become more regulated. You were ta saying that you bring parents uh, now into the program. Yes. Because what I've seen and what I've experienced working with children is so, so many times parents bringing their child or mm -hmm. bringing their adolescents, trying to, yes. or asking the therapist to fix the child and the adolescent. So what is your view around that and what have you brought uh, to this uh, field? Well, one of the things um, is that we've noticed personally as therapists coming in is that we as therapists were able to be more regulated. And so this is something that we have the experience as an adult in the room of being more regulated. And it helps us um, when we're inviting the parents in to also experience that level of getting sensory and motor inputs that help regulate them. Um, and so if parents are more regulated, they can connect better with their kids and that they we can also develop this flow, this um, rhythm of engagement. Um, and we can help parents feel more effective at regulating their children um, through different kinds of very normative kinds of activities that would be uh, um, available to them in their home, in their playground, in their community.
So it doesn't need um, a lot of equipment, material. Well, it does actually. Well, it does. It does. We use, um, we have, it, every room is different. Everyone can set up their room and in in what w- works for them. But the principals are really trying to capture um, getting some kind of proprioceptive input, which involves muscles and joints. So physio balls, trampolines, um, mats to be jumping into, um, things, uh, and then vestibular input, which has to do with um, the inner ear and the sense of um, movement in space having to do with the head. Um, and so things that involve spinning, rolling, being upside down, all of these are movements of the head that give us a vestibular input and um, tactile input. Um, and that is sort of deep touch pressure. So it's crashing into things. It's um, wearing weighted blankets or weighted vests. Um, it might be lighter kinds of touch, like in a ball pit um, or um, or just kind of, you know, having some kind of light touch um, or a light blanket. Um, and so through these different kinds of um, sensory inputs, um, it really helps the child and the parent have a much better sense of themselves. Um, and then using rhythm across these different kinds of inputs helps really develop um, a sense of connection. Um, and rhythm is both a tool and an outcome. And it's something that gets, you know, you can see the child develop their own. They can come in very frenetic and and disorganized and you can watch as they get the sensory and motor inputs and as they develop more rhythm they become more organized their language comes online um, and their regulation their eye gaze their social connection to both the therapist and to the parent um, all come online and who what 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 kind of um children or adolescents what kind of um how would you say? Um, well, we developed it for yeah. traumatized children. Oh, and we started. And how do you know? Because who it works for? So, so, sometimes when you, you have children that have problems at school or at mm. home or like very, um, with a lot of anger or, mm. um, HGHD or, um, usually we see the symptoms and we don't see the trauma, the trauma behind. True. And that's really what we are trying to, um, um, bring to the world is that yeah. usually behind those symptoms there's some trauma so we, mm. we and people don't come with sometimes people come or parents come with yeah. they've been through a divorce or they've been through um, mm-hmm. um, something that has been traumatized but sometimes they come with I don't know what happens they are just difficult they're just tough. I, yeah. I suppose you have that too. yes absolutely um, we were in a kind of unique position being at a place called the trauma center because it was in the name. So people had already kind of made the step of identifying trauma as an issue for these children. But that's really unusual in the sense that most places are community mental health centers um, or some other kind of name. And so it's not necessarily identified. Um, And, but complex trauma um, involves so many different kinds of problems with affect regulation, with behavior dysregulation, with sense of self, so it really can cut across all of the diagnostic um, and presenting problem kind of spectrum. And so um, I, I think our treatment has also been very helpful for kids who have not done so well in more cognitively oriented, talking, verbal types of therapies, um, because this allows them to come in um, and... and um, not have to use so many words. Words aren't the entry point. Um, they can come in and play and um, and get regulated in a different way um, and connect in a different way. And how can we uh, get trained in this um, model, this smart model? Right. So we have um, regular trainings, uh, online trainings, um, thanks to COVID. Um, we used to do two person in in person, two day in person. Um, trainings, um, which we still do now. We're back to, as COVID is um, taking a bit more of a backseat. Um, but our two, our online training is available um, multiple times a year. Um, it usually goes two hours, five over five weeks. Um, and there's we use a lot of video in, in the time, in the training sessions. They are um, uh, a limited number. And so there's also breakout and, and um, interaction with the other participants 
And um, we have found that having it spread out over five weeks, people can really actually start to integrate the, in, the information much better um, because they can practice some of the principles and ideas either with their clients or their families or themselves um, in between sessions. And so I feel like at the end of five weeks, they really come out of the training ready to begin um, trying out some of these materials. And then we really encourage them to join one of our consultation groups to, to help work through whatever barriers they come up against or wherever they feel like they get stuck and to really help them um, really um, implement and, and, and consolidate the uh, model for themselves. And you've written a book. It's a collective group. Uh, yes. It's a collective book. Yes. Um, what can we find in this book? I'm not sure we are going to be able to translate it, but why not? We'd be uh, really honored to um, to translate it into French. We are. We're actually looking at it. It's being translated into Italian, um, uh, Mandarin, and Norwegian. Um, and so um, we would love to translate it into French uh, and really be able to serve um, the people of France and, and all of the other French speaking, um, nations. And, and what can countries. people find in this? Oh, book? I'm sorry. Just yeah, in so case. the name no, of it that's is okay. That's great. That's encouraging to, uh, you know, you know, that's often the, yeah. the, the case and that people we talk about people really inspiring people and yeah. you're one of them. And, um, those people have written books and they're not available into French. So that's part of the yeah. quantum way mission to yeah. bring, um, all this knowledge, um, all this um, really deep um, understanding of a trauma and treating trauma right. into the French-speaking world. So, uh, so the name of the book is Transforming Trauma in Children and Adolescents. Um, and it can be found on Amazon and it can be found on uh, North Atlantic is our press. Um, it was published in 2020. And, um, and what, can people, what do people find in the book? Um, they will find the whole model laid out for them with, along with pictures and um, some case studies to really illustrate what this looks like um, in, you know, in complicated children and families. And, um, and they will see um, some of the graphs and charts that we use that really help illustrate um, because it's a, it is a very nonverbal um, kinds of treatment. And so you really need to be able to see it in action. Um, you need to see it through pictures and you need to see it through video. Um, and um, it's not just a, a way to just, just describe in words. And so um, that's what they'll, okay. that's what they'll get. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add that you've learned? Maybe tell parents about or a, a message you want to give to um the French audience, because it will be translated into French, or it is translated into French. What is the most important message you want to uh, give to um, therapists, but also yeah. to parents, maybe? I feel like this is a very accessible treatment. Um, it will, we have had multiple people say, oh, I've been doing stuff like this, but I didn't know why it was working, or I didn't know why. And this gives the framework for why it's helpful. And so it's not going to be some kind of really unusual treatment that it feels like it's very different from what you you really do. Um, I feel like it really taps into um, a very, it's very accessible treatment, both for clinicians and for parents. And things that we try in, this, in our office um, are things that we can easily translate to home. Um, and we can figure out in your home, how can we get some of this proprioceptive and this vestibular and this tactile input in a way that makes sense for you and your family. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Alex. It was Thank really you. nice meeting you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you.